Hey, this is Adam, FreelancingAdam.com. Welcome to the next lesson. I'm going to be sharing with you in this lesson how to go about finding and applying for the right projects for you on Upwork. Okay. Again, what I'm going to teach here is also transferable to any other platform like Freelancer.com, but I'm going to show you Upwork because that's where I primarily focus. So what I'll be covering, I'm going to take you through my process of filtering out the jobs on Upwork because I don't just apply for every job. I use their filters to find the jobs that um, I think are the best fit for me. I'm gonna show you how to apply for these jobs so that you get chosen for an interview, okay? And so I'm gonna actually take you through the whole process. I'll take you through the process so you'll see exactly what I do, okay? Um, so I'm gonna actually be doing it as a way of, of demonstrating it for you. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna cover quickly my my daily routine for landing new clients every week. Okay, so what I do on a daily basis to get clients from Upwork and other freelance platforms. So let's jump over to Upwork. And I just logged in again. When when you log in, um, I, it always defaults for me anyways. It defaults to their their messenger. Um, so what you want to do is just along the top here, you're going to see find work. So you'll click on find work. And then, okay, so this is where you can search. So what I always do is I generally search first with sort of what has, is really my specialty, which is Facebook marketing. So I'll just search with Facebook. Um, a lot of times I, I search with Facebook ads, but sometimes sometimes I'll just search with with Facebook. Okay. So what it'll do then is it will return jobs. And the other thing I do because I don't want to work with the bottom of the the you know I don't, I don't want to you know attract people who are just trying to pay the bottom dollar to get work done. So I always uncheck entry level. Now this isn't necessarily something you should do. If you're just getting started, let's say you're getting started in social media and you've never acquired a client before. I actually, I think I'd probably leave that checked um, just because there is a ton of value in getting your first client. It'll give you so much confidence when you get your first paying client. And since you're in control of a lot of the variables here, like when you first reach out to someone, even if they're looking for entry level work, you know, you can, Oftentimes I'll get in conversations with the client before they bring me on and I'll, I can, I can, um, you know, specify kind of my own expectations. Like, um, and oftentimes it's just a project, right? So even if you're getting a project where you're not getting the rate you're going to want to get forever, I mean, there's value in landing that first project, completing that first project that goes beyond what you're paid. Okay. So I'm not saying you should avoid entry level projects. I just do personally because just given where I'm at with the client work I have now, I really don't want to work with people who are, you know, looking for that, that those entry level type of people, but and not saying that necessarily is a bad place for you to start. In fact, I probably would start by keeping this check. Then I, I just kind of wanted to show you some of their other filters. And then what I usually do is I bump this up in case it's a fixed price project. I, don't want to do anything that's not going to be worth at least a hundred dollars okay so I always I, I like I said I always uncheck entry level and then I also slide this over to a hundred dollars in case it's fixed project works a lot of people come on here with ten bucks trying to get something done I have no interest in working with people like that I'm looking for real business owners that have a legitimate project or um, an hourly type of project that they want to they want to bring someone on for that's not entry level okay so then what I do is first thing I'll do is I'll kind of look through here and I'll see like what they're looking for so social media and digital marketing assistant you updating social media pages LinkedIn Goodreads Facebook YouTube this is kind of one of those I, I prefer projects that have a more more of a focus so when they're looking for kind of a jack-of-all-trades type I usually just ignore those um, Android app landing page design and conversion expert I'm currently running Facebook ads campaign a part of that campaign now this is this is the sort of thing that's in my wheelhouse so what I'll do is I'll right click on the link I'll open it in a new tab and then I'll I my and I'm gonna talk about my daily process but usually I try to find about three jobs um, affiliate relations manager urgently looking for a full-time social media manager I'm 
you know what, this might be okay. I don't, I generally stay away from full-time work because I prefer project work. But if you're somebody who would happily accept like a, a full-time or long-term project, absolutely don't, don't think that there's one way to do this. I'm giving you kind of my um, parameters so you understand how I go through this process. But the process doesn't have to be exactly the same for you. Um, let's see, Facebook marketing expert. This is, okay, so, so that's the kind of thing I do is I'll find like three jobs and then what I'll do is I'll go to these tabs and I'll look at each of them just to see if they're really what I'm looking for. So I'm currently running a Facebook ads campaign. As part of that campaign, traffic will be directed to a landing page. I would like someone to create a landing page for the Facebook traffic people opt in so I can build an email list. Ongoing work is available for the right applicant. Please stay bad mama jam jamma. I like this. So here's one thing I'll tell you about people. When they come on and they at least give you something in their 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 description, you know, that goes into some depth and is focused, those are by what I found are the best clients. Like um so even though this isn't a really long description that she's given, there I would obviously have some questions and follow-up questions for her. Um this is specific enough. I, she's put enough energy into this to tell me that she is probably going to be a serious, somebody who's serious about this job, right? This project. And I just mean that sometimes people will come on here and they'll be like, I'm looking for you to set up a Facebook campaign and they won't put anything else in there, which is a, a signal to me that they don't really take their business seriously. Okay. Um, the other thing you can look at is you can see a, how many jobs they've posted, what they've spent, how much they've paid. So like as you can see here, this person has a pretty good, looks like they have a pretty good track record. If they have, if they have reviews of four or better, that's generally pretty good. Um, they pay an average of $16 an hour. Now this is well under what I charge, but um, what I found is that oftentimes, um, you know, what will happen is, once they like out my my application I'm going to show you my application process in a minute here I tend to stand out just because I know how to reach people especially in my niche and when they see that I'm an expert the way I position myself they're willing to work with me at a higher rate than they're normally paying so I don't I just wanted to make sure you guys realize that when you look at this I mean I always you know sixteen dollars an hour is at least not like penny you know if I see that they're on average they're paying like four dollars an hour I won't even consider applying for their job because they're definitely the type then that is looking for hiring people the, you know just so you know these these marketplaces literally have people all over the world competing for these jobs so there's a lot of like people in other countries where you know they're you, just to be honest like the dollar goes a lot further in some of those other countries so the rates they offer are, are much lower and I I simply just don't try to compete in that in that place I I prefer to you know have a standard and stay above that standard okay and again by doing that I found that I attract clients that otherwise would have avoided me because I was trying you know I wasn't I was kind of my rate if you set it too low kind of reflects desperation okay so this is what I'm going to interview for I'm going to show you now what my process is for interviewing so what I do is I click on I'll always click on submit a proposal and that's going to take me to their proposal page. And then the other thing I do is I, I scroll down. I usually leave my hour where it is, but I expand this. I open this, I should say. Okay, so this is the actual total uh, job posting right here if you click on it. So I open it. I usually drag it into a separate window so that now... This is my this is where I'm going to fill out the proposal and I can just toggle back and forth because I want to I want to be kind of, you know, I want to really understand how they express their needs and use their language in my cover letter. OK, so I'll, I'll explain that to you in a minute. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to actually um, fill this out and then I'm going to take you through how I go about, you know, applying for these in a way that stands out and gets me chosen for jobs. I'm not saying every job I applied for I get. Um, you know, I get interviewed for, but I've had a pretty good track record um, because of A, my consistency, and B, I think I generally write cover letters that stand out, okay? So let me just pause this. Hey, so I have filled this out. Now I'm going to go through this and just help you understand my thinking, why I, you know, filled this out the way I did, okay? So first of all, as you can see, when you apply, it's, um, it always takes two connects. So as I told you in the previous video, you're going to get, I believe it's 60 connects every month. And if you use them, 
um, then it'll reload every month, okay? Um, for, for the proposed terms, I always just keep my default rate in there, but this can be negotiated as you, like if they decide to um, uh, accept your, like, they can they can basically choose to interview you okay and then this can be negotiated but i always you know choose my default rate okay and if this is a project that's like fixed rate you won't see this what you'll see is a fixed rate um bid just one box where you enter your you know whatever you're going to propose um as a fixed rate okay so now in the cover letter this is really the important part and this is what i'm going to i'm going to talk to you about so you'll see in this first paragraph i say hey there it sounds like you're just starting to run facebook ad campaigns for your business and you're looking for some help to make sure you launch a high converting campaign that gets results right away so you don't waste money that's great and i put um baby mama jamma in parentheses because in her proposal she said to do that bad mama jamma just so she's aware that you actually read her proposal. Um, so, so let's look at this paragraph. The reason I start out a lot of times this way is because what a lot of people do is they'll just say something like, um, I came across your posting and I think I'm a great fit for your job. Well, obviously you think you're a fitter, you wouldn't be applying. And obviously you just came across their posting. Try not to waste words in the beginning. I always just try to relate to them where they are and so, so I grab their attention. So I'm saying it sounds like you're just starting to run Facebook ads. My understanding from what she said is that she's running a Facebook ad campaign, but I can tell just through her wording that she's probably new to this, right? So I know that she's going to relate to that. Um, and then I'm using the words she uses, like Facebook ad campaign. You can see she says Facebook ads campaign, um, high converting. Uh, a high converting campaign. As you can see, she says high converting landing pages. One thing to do when you when you apply for jobs is read their profile carefully and kind of take note of how they're expressing their needs and then use their language back to them, you know, when you apply. Okay? Because that's that'll instantly create a connection. All right. Um, so I say, um, looks like you're just starting to run your Facebook ad campaigns and you're looking for some help to make sure you launch a high converting campaign that gets results right away so you don't waste money. So I'm trying to also just address some of the pain points a lot of people have and the fears they have when they're running ads, right? They don't want to waste money. So I put that up front because then they're immediately like, yes, this is exactly what I'm looking for and they'll keep reading, right? Your first paragraph is really important. So then I say, in my personal experience, running Facebook ads is the best and most predictable way to build your email list and generate clients for your business. So basically, I'm just reinforcing in their minds the decision they're making to run ads and hire someone to do it, right? Um, for the past four years, I've been helping small business owners and entrepreneurs to set up Facebook campaigns to attract their ideal prospect, grow their list, and get more clients. And as you can see here, I'm not telling them that I just help people set up campaigns. I'm helping them. I'm, I'm focusing on the outcomes, attract their ideal prospect, grow their list, and get more clients. And that's something you guys should be thinking about when you apply for jobs. What are the outcomes you can help people with? In fact, in my most recent campaign, I helped my client who is in the health product business generate um, health product. I should change this to niche. Generate over 50 leads for her most recent promotion. So this is a really straightforward, um, I don't load up um, like, you know, results in my in my applications I generally just give them one that'll hit really hard with a result that I know they'll be able to you know grasp the significance of like um, I helped this lady generate 50 leads for her promotion for only four dollars she was getting those leads for 10 cents and I know that's a result that will stand out um, then I also mentioned my own results I've also used the strategies to build my own subscriber list to over 2200 subscribers and make hundreds of sales products online both my own and through affiliate networks all from Facebook campaigns I've set up and optimized myself we can create the high converting pages for your campaign with lead pages or any landing page software you prefer I mostly use lead pages but I'm also proficient with optimized press drive themes click funnels and more and I'm very adaptable to any platform you're already using so I want her to make I want her to feel comfortable working with me even if she doesn't use as the platform that I use most of the time right just keep this in mind you want to be convincing with your application that you're somebody that can help them right and then I always put at the end I always say if you have any questions I would be happy to jump on a Skype call I use Skype and almost in every case before I get hired they want to do this but I think by including this oftentimes I'm somebody they consider just because they know they can reach out to me and get their questions answered before they hire me all right and then I say I look forward to hearing back from you soon and possibly working together on this project when you can use words like this too, like working together, um, as you notice here, I said we can create the high, it almost starts to implant in their mind working with you, 
right? So that's another thing that I do is I don't load up my app, my app applications with 